Hello, welcome to the Nintendo Bros Podcast. This is Pete. And this is Derek. And we're back after a long hiatus, aren't we, Derek? Yeah, I, I would consider this like a new season of the Nintendo Bros Podcast. Or the end of a season, considering summer is over. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. It, I guess. It's a new season in the sense that, you know, and as far as Nintendo generations go, I feel like we're in the precipice of the beginning of a new generation and we'll have years to talk about where the Switch generation is kind of at the end. Yeah, I mean, like, even though we discussed Switch 2 in past podcasts, I feel like, you know, now we're kind of in that zone of our discussions are going to be Switch 2 oriented and actually be talking about Switch 2 games in the very near future. Yeah, like, I'm hoping they announce the Switch 2 by the end of 2025, and we're looking at a uh, 2026 Christmas release. Um, <laughs> at this point. I, I, but in, in all seriousness, I expect to hear about Switch 2 in the next, I would say, three weeks. I, I, I'd hope so, and that's what, something we're going to talk about tonight. Um, but first I want to talk about something else that was recently announced. This is the PS5 Pro. Mm-hmm. And we never really got a chance to talk too much about it, Derek, but I watched the uh, announcement. It was pretty heavily uh, leaked, rumored, like everyone knew it was coming, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, before I talk about my thoughts, what are your thoughts? Um, I, I think it kind of stands in the same as the PS4 Pro in my mind, um, in the sense that I already have a PS5. It does everything I need it to do. I have no interest in the Pro. But not just for the cost, but just I don't need those features. Um, and for the, but for those that want to spend the money and that want that incremental upgrade, like all the power to you, like great. I I think you should be able to buy what you want to buy. But again, for me, it's like I I'm someone that even with you know I go back to my cell phone and I like having it until it's dead and having a huge kind of generational leap. I don't need these kind of half gens or smaller incremental upgrades. So. That plus the, in my opinion, in Canadian dollars, the extreme price it is. I just don't think it's worth the the cost. Um, and like, I, will it play games at 4K and 60 frames per second, and you know have um, uh, ray tracing and, and whatnot? Yeah, sure. But I just you know I, I like the games I'm playing right now at 60 frames and having some. Maybe even if they have performance issues down to fifty, or maybe they don't have the best quality textures, like it doesn't, it doesn't phase me enough to be like, oh yeah, I really need a thousand dollar upgrade. It's more like, yeah, like you know, it, I'm sure it could get better, but I really, I'm enjoying the games I'm playing right now. They feel great, they look great. I have no issues. In that I mean, you money. touched on something there, though. I generally agree with you about the half half update, half measure updates. I mean, granted, I bought a DS Lite and a new 3DS, and you know, I I actually was. Maybe on the fence about getting a PS5 Pro because, you know, for a while I was waiting for it uh, mm -hmm. to get a PS5. I got a PS5 used. It's had some issues, which I'll talk about later. Um, so I was kind of like, ah, do I trade my PS5 in for a PS5 Pro? But the main thing that you touched on was the price uh, being, in, in Canadian, $959.99. And, and a uh, reminder, that doesn't include most of the... the like the other hardware features that a lot of people would want to buy. That's well, just like the model. it has no it has no disc drive. It has no vertical stand. It has no PlayStation Plus. Like like there's something well, else. Of course, of too. course, it doesn't have PlayStation Plus. I know. And I'm but, just saying, when, when you really count up all the dollars you need to like get started on this system, you're not thinking of nine sixty nine. You're thinking of or nine fifty nine, whatever. You're thinking of nine fifty nine plus plus the um, PS Plus plus this vertical stand plus the disc drive. Plus tax, so you're looking at like you and, know fifteen hundred dollars. Not maybe not fifteen hundred, but well over a thousand Canadian. Um, well, that's pretty close to fifteen hundred dollars. Well, perhaps, but I I think the thing is is you know whether or not you are happy with it or I'm happy with it. It seems like by and large, people are really unhappy with it, and it seems to be what I would even call an undesirable product altogether. Like no one seems happy with this announcement. I think the fact that it's such a premium price and they don't include the disc drive or the stand are almost, it almost doesn't feel like a pro model if it's missing key features that the base model had. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just kind of like a slap in the face to not put that stand in. I, I just think most people are disappointed in it and I actually don't see it selling very well or really moving the needle. Like obviously PS5 is selling well, but I don't think it's going to like give PS5 a sales boost whatsoever. To totally. I don't think it'll be a sales boost at all. And I don't, I agree with you or I just, 
I think it'll sell, but I don't think it'll sell well. Like I think there's a niche audience for this, and I'm curious of what kind of um, projections. Rich people. Rich people. Yeah, but I'm, I, I didn't mean that. People, I meant what kind of projections Sony had predicted this would sell. Like, are they thinking it'll do the, as well as the PS4 Pro? Will it? I don't know. But, like, I just don't think this is going to become the, the kind of new model that everyone's going to buy. I think this is a very kind of niche uh, sell to people. Yeah, and, I mean, the other thing to mention, too, is that um, it's not like before with the PS4 Pro or, or the Xbox uh one x where they actually offered a higher resolution Th- mm-hmm. this is like we already have 4k games we already have most games running at a clean 60 frames per second like there's no game where it's like oh it really has performance issues i need a ps5 pro to make it better mm-hmm. um like there were games for the new 3ds that improved the frame rate like hyrule warriors on the 3ds um and you know had there been this like let's say gta 6 was coming out and it was 30 frames on the b- base ps5 and 60 frames on the PS5 Pro, now you've maybe got my interest a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. But there's just nothing really like that. And I don't, it doesn't, when they showed it off, they basically said you're going to get the fidelity mode in high frame rate. So yeah. it just wasn't really that appealing to me. I'm like, I'm already, I'm playing games like Astrobot, and I'm already like, this game looks great. Uh, it feels like the PS5 has barely any exclusives from Sony to begin with. You know, mm-hmm. we've had PS4 games the whole time. So I just I don't know. I mean at this point I don't see myself ever buying this thing. I'll probably get a PS6. It's exactly the same as I, I feel. Um very disappointing. Uh I think I think all they need to do is knock it a hundred dollars lower, throw in a disk drive, and they would have made it a lot more appealing. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, just talking about the PS6, again, I'm someone that if I got the PS5 Pro, I feel like I would be less likely or, or enjoy less is a better way to put it the ps6 like i really you know when i buy that next generation i want to feel like dang that's a pretty big leap like this is awesome and i had trouble even feeling that fully with the ps5 where i love the ps5 but it still is like you know it's harder and harder to notice those huge tr- jumps in graphics like the ps4 running the last of us 2 looks great you know and i understand it's 30 frames and it's you know not the most mind-blowing game ever or sorry mind-blowing graphics on the ps4 um, and the PS5 does do better. Like, I don't want people to comment saying, you're totally wrong. I get it. But it, it's not as substantial as, let's say, the PS2 to the PS3, right? Every generation is getting smaller and smaller. So to have a half jump uh, from the PS5 Pro to the PS6, I just don't know if that would entice me where at least the PS5 big jump to the PS6 will hopefully get me there. Like, I agree. Like, I, agree. Like, I, I, I need a system to start chugging real hard before I want to make that next generation jump. Where, like, I'm thinking about the Switch, for example. Like, you know, it's having trouble doing some of its games at 30 frames per second. So I'm really, at the moment now, can't wait to get a Switch 2 to even play older games the way I want to play older games. Um, where where the PS5 Pro is like, well, I'm just... I'm already fully satisfied with what I'm playing. Exactly. And I, I think that's actually something nice about um, how Nintendo's been handling it, is that... You know, the jump between the GameCube and the Wii was practically non-existent, but the jump between the Wii and the Wii U slash Switch was pretty significant jump into HD, and I'm anticipating the jump from Switch 1 to Switch 2 to be a pretty significant, like, obvious update. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. when we see Mario Kart 9, I expect expect the graphics to be a lot more impressive than 8, and Mm -hmm. I think that's not something that, with Xbox and Sony being, like, you know, peak graphics, are going to be able to maintain. Um, Yeah. I think there, it was a long time where people were saying, oh, Microsoft's so behind the ball. They don't have a pro model coming out. And I think after this announcement, everyone's kind of like, okay, let, let's rest in this generation for a while. If anything, I want to see games that are not on the Series S and really maximize the Xbox Series X and really maximize the PS5 as exclusives, mm-hmm. um, which hopefully we'll see. But I think we're, it's starting to happen, right? We're starting to see games that are not on last generation consoles. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're, we're getting there. Um, but speaking of next generation consoles, uh, Switch Two, uh, there was a <laughs> we'll talk about <laughs> nice, it nice, nice transition there. <laughs> segue. Um, there was a leak. Did you see this? About the the pictures of this the hardware. Yeah, and there was even a channel that did a three D print of it, <laughs> like a full three oh, D cool. printing of it. Yeah, it was a Chinese channel uh, or Asian. I think it was Chinese, but they kind of compared it and. You know, I'll just give a quick rundown of what the major differences are as far as the you know, the hardware goes. Um, it's the same real... It's pretty much the same look as the original Switch. Like, the average person might not be able to sell, tell them apart, but it is bigger. It's, like, noticeably bigger. 
Hmm. Um, the SL and SR buttons, like on the Joy-Con, like the R and L and the Joy-Con, are now bigger and like they look much improved. Um, there's a new way to attach the Joy Cons. Like there's no side railing to attach slide on. Yes, yeah, like a magnetic attachment right that's what they've been saying but it looks like there's some sort of new mechanism there which i'm curious about hmm. um there's a USB-C port on the bottom like there was on the switch but there's also one on the top mm-hmm. um presumably I heard that just another way to charge it or to have a headphone or a, a you know have like a some sort of plug-in adapter or something, like for a for a peripheral or something who knows yeah. that could be like nothing uh it has a new button underneath the home button uh yeah uh otherwise it looks the same and i i made a note here that my my dream of a wii sensor bar type situation is probably dead uh (laughs) yeah because there's nothing to indicate that which i think is really sad still i think that especially we'll talk about world of goo later but um i think that sensor bar needs to make a comeback um or the or the technology with the gyro aiming needs to improve tenfold um, yeah, I agree with that for sure. But I don't think it will. Um, but I'm curious, Derek, uh, what do you think about this new button? Like, that's like the, the major thing with this. Uh, there's a few tech specs, you know, at 12 gigs of RAM, 256 of fast, faster hard drive. Uh, I saw on Digital Foundry, they speculate it's basically on par as the Xbox Series S, maybe in some ways surpassing it. it has more RAM, it's going to maybe have DLSS uh, upscaling. So there might be ways where the Switch 2 actually looks better or an equivalent to some next gen games. So can I ask a couple of questions? Is this confirmed to be like pretty confidently is true? No. Okay, so this could be totally, we're just speculating here. But people, a lot of people have reason to believe that it probably is true. Yeah, I, I just didn't know what the kind of, you know. Like Digital Foundry it thinks it's true. Like everyone's talking about it. It's not like a flippant rumor. Uh, it's being kind of widely purported, reported as like a dev kit specs that have kind of leaked okay. out. And it's not surprising. Um, Does it still have about, the, the the plus minus button? Yes, and it it's still almost, has the share, did, the share button on the other side. Yep. I mean, we don't know what the buttons are exactly, but it, it's it's the same placement, same size. Okay, but there's an extra button on the left Joy-Con. Yep, and a new mechanism for the Joy-Cons to attach. So, I guess my my two questions for you is: What do you think that other button is? Mm-hmm. What do you think the cost is going to be, especially given that the PS5 Pro is expensive? We kind of know now that. We can't really, how cheap can it really be? And the other thing is, um, what is the Nintendo unique update? Because Nintendo usually likes to tout some sort of new update hardware wise with their system. What could that be here? Uh, what do you think about those things? Yeah, so I'll answer the first question first and then we can get to the okay. second. The, the first question, it could go a lot of ways. Like, I'm just thinking about what the, the, you know, PlayStation and, and Microsoft have been doing for their buttons. And I could see it being a mute button and they're they're going more in on the um, like microphone and headset and Wi Fi and online. It could be something like related to that kind of stuff. I very much doubt that. Um pretty me? I, I really don't think it'll be a mute button. Uh, I can see it being bringing up an option for multiple social features, yeah. like I was gonna say, like a friends, friends list. That was my yeah, my next thing. Yeah. So just just something Wi-Fi related, like friends list, social, like game, like just some kind of not going back to the the home screen, but some kind of like a side menu that does something else, like like Wi-Fi or or social kind of things. Yep. Um, Me the only other thing I could. The only thing, yeah, the only other thing I could imagine is, but it doesn't really make sense with it only being on one side of the Joy Cons. Is like maybe there's a button to release the Joy Cons, but they would put that at the top where they have it now, or where the there, there there is that button still there. So. Okay, okay, yeah. So I, I just I haven't looked at pictures, but um, yeah, I really don't know. It could be something totally unique that Nintendo's planning, but I could also see it being a really silly button that they thought would be cool and isn't going to be cool. I mean, I. My mind leans on it being something for social features. Like you press it, instantly see your friends list, what they're playing, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. I think that's what I'd like it to be. Um, also, I'd love if they brought Miiverse back. Uh, that'd be so cool. But who knows, right? Like it could just be like a feature. I mean, like you speculated before, there might be a way that you can connect to a TV without the dock. Maybe it has to do with that. Um, but... Whatever it is, I don't see it just being kind of like, oh, yeah, it's one of these. I, I think they're going to like put a focus on it because it's the only new thing hardware-wise that we can see. How cool would that be if I was right? 
<laughs> I mean, I still it? don't see. Can you it imagine happening? it's called? Can you imagine it? It's called the Nintendo Click, and you click the button, and it instantly does it. What exactly what I said? <laughs> well, <laughs> some people. Here's the thing. Like, I still don't think it's gonna be like an Apple TV, where like every Apple, uh, every smart TV has has Apple built into it, so you can connect to any TV with your phone or iPad. Mm-hmm. I think that would have leaked. I think Nintendo doesn't have the resources for that. Um, I think if anything, and there's also lag and things like that that don't work for gameplay. But I think if anything, there might be the hard. There might be more hardware built into the dock, and maybe there's some sort of feature where you can press the button and switch between the TV and the and the like without actually plugging in. You can actually play on the TV with your switch. Yeah, it's kind kind of, kind of like the Wii U almost. Yes. Um, the, also, the, other thing like it, it, the other thing it could be, which I'm not saying it, they've done it well or whatever, but you know, as someone that bought the PS Portal this summer, it's really well done. Like it works really, really well, and I could see it being similar where you know you're playing your Nintendo Switch games anywhere there's Wi-Fi, and but like, it's already the, it's, the hardware's already built into the. Yeah, that's like, true. That doesn't. Why would they do that? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, that I doesn't make any sense. That doesn't sense. make any sense, you're right, now that I think about it. But, that. you know what, for the love of God, Nintendo, we've waited so many decades for you to include modern features to play with friends. Yeah. And I'd really, really like if I could press one button, see who's online, and join them and message them instantly and start party chats. Like, come on. Mm-hmm. Like, I get that you don't want to have randoms chatting with randoms, but I should be able to start a party chat with, with you and I see a friend come on, I can click invite, join in the party, and, like, that should be a thing. But even random chatting with randoms, like, you know, teenagers and 11-year-olds and even, like, 8-year-olds are playing Roblox and Fortnite on, with randoms. Like, it's just the truth of the world. Like, they're just doing that. And I really think that it's a simple solution of... You know, Nintendo really cares about their parents and, and children protection, whatever. Just make it blatantly obvious when you first turn on the new Switch 2 that it's like, do you want your child to have controls or whatever? And that's like the first thing that pops up. And you press yes or no. And then it yeah, talks but, you through. But then, then your seven-year-old just says no. Like how many kids? The thing, the thing is that you're not considering is, yes, there's those parents who will do the protection on the system. You can even use the Switch now and set it that they can only play for one hour. Like, there's all sorts of parental yeah, but, things. But, then, but how many kids then, get a Switch for Christmas, and they're the only ones to ever open that box and turn that system on? Like, that, yeah, they, you know Nintendo what, then, doesn't want the parents to have to approve their, their kids. Yeah, yeah, but then parents can't complain if that kid goes on the internet and, and talks about penises uh, to some random stranger because the parent had no effort into protecting their child. But there's a big difference between letting your six-year-old go on the computer or an iPad with the internet and giving them a Switch with Mario Kart. Like, that's there's a world of difference there. Like, Nintendo wants you to be able to give your six-year-old kid a, a console with Mario Bros. Yeah, but, but, but so many kids are given a phone now and, under, and so many people and parents are just understanding the connectivity of devices now. I, parents should just know that. Like, I, I'm sorry. Like, I understand you just want to be able to like, so give it to I, them and I, I'm better. Gonna, I'm, I'm going to say right now, I I really still think that's not going to be a thing because I think Nintendo doesn't want to be the ones offering you the option to make that communication. Like, they, they want to be completely uh, d- uh, divorced from you talking to a stranger. I think, though, still, that social button will still be there for you and I to send invites, for you and I to chat, for you and I to start parties, I still think you're going to join Mario Kart and Animal Crossing and not be able to talk with someone who's not on your friends list. Oh, I, sorry. I agree with that, too. Yeah, sorry, like, I, a, 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 like if you give a kid a Mario Kart and he j- jumps online, he's not going to be able to hear people calling him the, the, the no, but swear I should, No, but I should be able to send that random person a social invite and they accept it and then we can chat through Mike. Absolutely. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, when it comes to using the internet, like, how is a five-year-old going to get on the internet in Mario Kart? Like, you know, like, they have to have a credit card. Like, there are some barriers there. Yeah. Um, but I I just think, yeah, I think it'll be more social features. And the, with the system having more RAM, I think they'll have an option for that. So, mm-hmm. I totally agree. Now, next little quick question. We've talked about this before. I mean, now that we have some details, like, what is the hardware update here like other than power it seems very unlike nintendo to just be like hey here's a new system it has better graphics like what what is it that's going to be this unique hardware selling point i think this one might just be a more uh, a safer generation 
um, you know, after coming off the Wii U, I think they're a little bit like, you know, we don't, let's just keep the, the train going. Like, we have a, a success story here at the Switch. Let's, and it's still being successful. Like, it's still selling 50,000 Switches in the J- J- Japan every week. You know, so I think for them it might be let's just do what people want. People want this handheld switch that can dock and play on a TV. Let's get it more power. Let's make the ergonomics better. Let's make the social connections better. Let's make the battery life screen bigger. Like, like I, I don't think they need to have a gimmick. You're right. It's un unnormal or abnormal for them to have no gimmick. But I think maybe they're under this new leadership, under kind of, you know, their new planning and the forecast of what they have seen in video games the past five years or whatever, that maybe they are just saying, let's not, you know, put some crazy gimmick in there. Um, I don't think there will be, except for maybe that button doing exactly what we said, where it is connecting to the TV from, you know, you're holding in your hands. Yeah, I mean, I still feel like, I mean, remember, Nintendo did a power boost with the GameCube and it didn't go so well for them in a way like they, they've always sort of relied on something related to the hardware to be special I mean other than Game Boy Advance which was like the only successful update they've ever had that didn't involve a big I mean it was color versus I guess Game Boy Color was color but it's like that's the only time they've had a successful generation jump with where it was just power Mm-hmm. Like, even the GameCube had the wave bird. I mean, even the 3DS had th- a 3D screen. So, uh, it just seems a little odd. I mean, I'm wondering if they don't have a camera or have uh, improved HD rumble or, um, I don't know, even like a peripheral that is sold separately with a game. You know, something to give it a little... True, you know? but but it also could be that their selling point is not hardware this time. It's a huge software overhaul. Right, like a boost the hardware, but saying, "Hey, this is the so- this is the not game software, but I mean like firmware. Like, hey, like look at the social elements we have now. Look how our online is being built. Look at how our you know whatever whatever tr- achievement system and what like I, I I don't know. They might just say the system's getting an upgrade, but the the actual virtual platform is getting a total deconstruction and improvement." And I, I love that. I just think that knowing Nintendo, um, you know, it's just like they, it's just very atypical of them. And it's a little, it's a little like, as much as I'm excited for that and like for them to just do a, a standard upgrade with better, way better graphics, I still think I'd be a little bit, I still want something new to feel with it. Cause even like the dual sense in the PlayStation controller is so cool. Um, so I don't know, maybe something. Maybe, maybe they will have adaptive triggers on their Joy Cons. Yeah, um, you're right, and I, and I also think that if the game the system does rely more on a traditional upgrade path with just like you know improved specs, then they will have to have an absolutely killer lineup of exclusives. Like they won't be able to roll out Mario Kart Nine that's cross gen and 3D Mario that's cross gen, and you know what I mean. Like they're gonna have to come yeah. out being like, this is why you need the system and you need it now. And you got to remember, like part of the novelty. I know it's from the switch but like the portability is still really cool and the fact is they're going to keep this at a reasonable price this is not going to be an 800 hundred dollar system um i think they're that's the next question like what's the cost yeah like i I think it'll be are we talking canada or u.s uh let's think about in u.s because it's easier because that's what the debate's around and so i'll just just lay out the debate here yeah the switch is 299.99 still (laughs) it was launched at that price Sure, you can get it with the Mario Kart and the three months of online. The Switch OLED is three forty nine ninety nine, so three fifty. People yeah. say, are they going to go as high as three ninety nine ninety nine at four hundred dollars? And some people speculate it could be even higher. There's no way they're going to launch this at two ninety nine ninety nine because that's cheaper than the OLED is today. But people, they talk about this on Digital Foundry. How can they only be fifty dollars more expensive than the OLED model? When it's so incredibly, it's based on the, these leaks about the, the specs, it has so much more in, internally for the specs. Like, it's almost like they, so the speculation, if they sold it for three ninety nine ninety nine, which would be 500 Canadian or, you know, 400 US, a $50 increase over the OLED, they might still be taking a loss on the system. Some people speculate, well, it's Nintendo, they might go four fifty or even four ninety nine ninety nine, given it's a premium model. Who really knows? But Nintendo's sensitive. Uh, what do you think they're going to do? 
Yeah, I, I mean, my initial jump was three ninety nine ninety nine, but you're right about the whole OLED costing only fifty less. But we have to remember that you know the OLED even is a couple years old now, and um, those just because they're selling well, so they haven't lowered the price, doesn't mean that that price shouldn't or couldn't be lower, right? And still have a value profit there. They're just trying to maximize their their income, their revenue. Um, so if I think about what makes sense most for their market, like as far as getting people to buy their platform, I think four ninety nine is crazy. I could see four forty nine ninety nine. I am still shockingly going to say three ninety nine ninety nine, and because I really think all, the other two switches, like the Switch OLED and the original Switch, will go down in price, and the three ninety nine ninety nine is what this Switch is, and I think they'll probably will sell it at a loss for at the beginning. But they've already kind of done the forecast of oh, in two, three years, this three ninety nine ninety nine model, which will they'll keep at that price, will then become profitable. Like but the I, I think the truth is though, Derek, and I've looked into this. The reason that consoles don't drop in price the way they used to is because they can't shrink. They can't do die shrinks the same way they used to. I mean, I'm not super technical, but back in the PS2 era, that. That the, the guts of that console would shrink so much over time because of the way technology was increasing. That's not true today. And that's why consoles like PS5 are actually seeing slight increases in certain countries. Like chip shortages mixed with the facts that die shrinks are not the same. It, there's actually a reason why Switch hasn't dropped in price. So that's actually might not be true that they can in two years project a price drop. That's on yeah. a technical level. You know? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know enough about technology and business sense and economics to predict what they're forecasting and all this kind of stuff. I just, in my head, it doesn't make sense that the Switch and Switch OLED haven't gone down in value or in cost. Like, they just have had to. And I, I truly believe that the the Switch 2 is, it could be, you're right, I, I would say definitely not 499. It could be 449.99. I, I, I don't know. Um, I really don't know what the landscape is, but in my mind, this the Nintendo will say we will sell it for you know fifty dollars under what we think or a hundred dollars under what we think to get this into the hands because they know like like truly you got to think about the market. They know that if this is going to go to a ten year old, right, that's going to bang it up and drop it. Parents are not going to drop five hundred dollars for it. They will not. Which so is they six hundred or seven hundred Canadian exactly. Yeah, like they 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 that's just unreasonable. So I think they have kind of looked at that and said you know. What can we cram into this that's the best we possibly can? Again, you got to remember like seven or eight years ago, $300 switch is $300 now. But this is seven years later. So a $300, $400 switch, two, is going to have way better technology because it's seven years. And technology moves quickly, especially in this in this area of technology. I mean, there's um, also worth keeping in mind that uh, Nintendo sells so much of their own software. So it's not like Microsoft that's giving games away for free on Game Pass and taking massive losses, or Sony that has a couple big tent poles throughout the generation. Like Nintendo can safely say, like if you look at the top ten sales of the three consoles, Nintendo's is almost always all Nintendo. So they, yeah. the at least I'm just I just listened to D, uh, Digital Foundry about this today. They were saying that Nintendo actually is in a better position to take a loss on it because they know they're going to sell uh, at least a. At least three or four of their first party games to that one uh, console buyer in the next year or two. T totally, I was going to say the same thing. Like you, you know, you're looking at 50 million plus sales of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Like, who cares? They want 50 million Switch 2 sales or whatever price to sell 50 million Mario Kart 8 or Mario Kart 9s. Yeah. Like, like they that's kind of their game. So, I, I don't know the exact price. I don't see it being 4.99 because of I, I'm not. Again, not the economy technology side, but as a parent consumer kind of vision, I can't imagine them going that high. And it's been seven years, right? Seven well, years from. I, I agree. I actually think it's going to end up being three ninety nine ninety nine. Uh, Do you think it'll have an OLED screen? Has that been confirmed? No, Wonder no, I don't either. And it's been pretty much leaked that it hasn't. I also think that um, there's possibility that there's a multiple SKUs, like there's a three ninety nine model. And maybe there's a model that's four forty nine, and it comes with like two vouchers for for Switch One games or something like some way to like charge a little more and give a pack in or something, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but there's also the other possibility that some people have speculated on that the system will be five 
hundred dollars or five fifty. But the strategy there is they're going to keep selling Switch and Switch OLED, and for the first two years of the life of this thing, every game is going to be multi-platform. So they say, here's the new 3D mm. Mario, the new Mario Kart, but they're still on Switch. If you want the higher frame rate and you want these new social features, you have to pay the premium model. I think that would be not a good decision. I think Nintendo needs to like bring this out as a brand new product that every kid wants. They can't just be like, hey, we are only appealing to the premium people. I think that, like you said, they want every kid to want this. Um, so I think they're going to try to like basically, you know, cut, cut from Switch and go to Switch 2 in a hard way. Even though it'll have backwards compatibility. Like, I'm betting they're... I think it's too late to probably change their price. They've already had that locked in for probably, you know, a year. But I'm betting they're at least seeing what the effect of this PS5 Pro price kind of controversy and discussion is having. And they're going, man, price seems like a big sticking point on consoles right now. Is there a way we can even shave off 25 bucks, 50 bucks, throw in, like you said, uh, you know, a Switch 1 game or a really fun demo of a... Or a smaller built-in game like One Two Switch or whatever into the Switch Two, like they, I'm just trying to find a way where they can trim that price a little bit. Um, I think three ninety nine. Yeah. Nintendo's always been price sensitive. Yeah. I just think, I think this generation, too. Nintendo's going to be more likely to maybe take a loss on the hardware. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but we'll see. I, I think I agree. Three three ninety nine ninety nine. It's still going to be five hundred dollars Canadian. Uh, yeah. That plus a game plus a new pro controller, yeah. you're in. D- you're in deep. <laughs> day one. Day day one. <laughs> day one for sure. And I I wonder if they'll have a new pro controller too. I I wouldn't mind that with a you know. Um, yeah, if it added if it, there actually were more features, um, like you know haptic or um, adaptive triggers, or whatever. I would love that, but I don't yeah. need another pro controller. I I would love it if they had like a, a pro controller that came with a headset. That's kind of like a something like that. I don't know what else you want to discuss tonight. I, I wanted to have one question, and, and I wanted a list of 50 ge- ideas or guesses. One game, what do you think is going to be the biggest launch title? One game. Don't, don't two? name. Don't Yeah, don't name five maybes. Tell me the one game. Call well, it. I made a list of five. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Just one. 100% it's the 3D Mario. Hmm. Okay. And I, like I've always speculated, it's going to be one big Breath of the Wild open world. And, and I mean day gonna... one, not launch window. Day one. Day one. And they're, I think they're going to show it when the system is shown off. And I think it's their next major, major AAA game. And I and I think they're going to sell it for the extra $10 like they did Breath of the Wild. Or sorry, Tears of the Kingdom. Um, it's Yeah, I think it's going to be a tentpole. I think it's what the Mario team's been working on for four years. And I think it's going to be epic. And I think that's why they delayed the system. So they can get make it even better. And yeah, I do think you, it's going to be do you think, awesome. Uh, do you think Prime 4 will be a day one? Or before or after? I think that I actually think that Prime Four is going to come out like in May, and I think the Switch Two is going to come out in March. So I actually think that Prime Four will be a cross-gen title. Hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Like I think, but I don't it see makes, it coming. Makes sense. Yeah. I don't see it coming day one because I think like the Metroid Prime Four I think is going to be an excellent game, and I just don't think they're going to have. I don't think it's going to be. They're going to want to launch with a Mario and a Metroid Prime, but, but I mm-hmm. do think I, I think it's possible that. Mario is the only Nintendo first party game at launch. And I think that that's, but I think you're also going to see Capcom and Konami and Ubisoft and Square. Like, you're going to see a fleet of games. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You're going to see Final Fantasy Remake. You're going to see Resident Evil 4 Remake. You're going to see all sorts of things. Um, so I think we might even think, see things like, you know, Western games, uh, Red Dead Redemption, Cyberpunk. Who knows, right? Um, mm-hmm. But but I don't. I think Nintendo might have such a big launch game they might not want to compete with themselves. You know, mm-hmm. they might have like an yeah, indie yeah. game, like a Snipper Clips or like a Nintendo Dogs or something that kind of complements yeah, it. But I, yeah. yeah, I don't see them more like an Arms, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I even think with Arms, even if it's like for the Switch One, Arms was obviously complete by the time the Switch launched, but they still waited till April. So I think Rat, I think Mario is going to be the day one game. And I think they're still going to have a game ready for April. They'll have Metroid for May. They'll have Mario Kart for August. They'll have, you know, whatever else. Animal Crossing for the holiday. <laughs> you always have these it's such ridiculous lineups of like seven first party titles. Never but why is that like... ridiculous when the Switch launched with Breath of the Wild? One month later was uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. One month later was ARMS. One month later was Splatoon 2. One month later was Mario and Rabbids. One month later was okay, uh, so, you know so what I mean? You. Mario okay, Odyssey. Mar- like... Mar- hold on, Mario and Rabbids was 
uh, August. U- Ubisoft. Mario yeah, but it's still a big Mario, Mario uh, game. Mario Arms is not a big game. Splatoon 2 is using a lot of the same assets from Splatoon 1. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is a port with up, upgrades. I get it, but <laughs> it's not like they drop you know a whole bunch of games that are brand new like you just named. I, I but I, all I really think is that you know it could be something like um, I, I see know. it as I see it as if you're right I would say Mario launch a couple months later like you're saying May June summer game Metroid because they have to come to come out eventually yep. and then I would say in the holiday you're getting Mario Kart nine or some kind of Mario Party and uh, Mario not Kart Mario Eight. Par- not Mario Party we're getting one this year true. Um, I think it's Pikmin gonna be Mario Kart Nine. Pikmin Five. <laughs> yeah, pick, yeah. <laughs> uh, I I agree with you, and I also think there's uh, there's even a chance that we might get like a two D Donkey Kong in there because that's been. Really I was gonna forever. say that too, actually. Yeah, yeah. And of course, we'll get maybe we'll get the Wind Waker Twilight Princess double like HD pack or like yeah. things like that. Like, and I think I, Animal Crossing won't be far away. I don't think it'll be in the first year though. Yeah, maybe it's March twenty twenty six. Yeah. Um, but all things, I think when they show the system off, we're gonna see like the first year plus of games. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, I can't wait. Like, I'm so excited. Like, I seriously can't wait. Like, I just want it to be announced so badly. It's crazy that remember when you were hesitant about getting the Switch day one? I can't even believe that. I know. And, yeah. I mean, I was. I remember I was hesitant too, and I was like, you know, what? I'm just gonna pre- pre-order one and decide that. And then I told you the same thing. You decided to pre-order two, and we never looked back. I think what happened was after that j- January uh, showcase, we were a little bit disappointed. It was like, oh, like. Splatoon 2, okay. Mario Kart Port, okay. Arms, okay. It's like Odyssey's in the fall. Like, it seemed like but Zelda was I, it. You know? I think, but and I think, you know, when pre orders finally hit, we were both kind of thinking, like, you know, I want to play Zelda on the best software, uh, hardware. And we both, both knew that other games were going to come. Yeah. And I think the thing is, like, Zelda started to get, like, mega, mega hype, right? Like, mm-hmm. we had seen it, it looked great. But when those hands on started happening right before the Switch launch, it's like, there's like, uh oh, this is going to be one of the best games of all time. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyways, Derek, I I want to talk about what games we've been playing because I know that's a big chunk of this podcast because we haven't talked in so long and we've both been playing a lot of games. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games to talk about. Okay, I'm gonna I have to write mine out a little bit. I'm gonna try to remember them, but uh, you might need to go first. Okay, I'll go kind of fast. Um, okay. So obviously, we both talked about World of Goo too. Uh, which originally was one of our most, both of our most excited games. Yeah. Um, now there is an update that has come out for it. I don't know if you know this. It's got an update. I haven't tried the update yet, but apparently they've done some bug fixes. They've done some refinements. There's now a pro controller option. Hmm. Um, but in general, it's disappointing. I found it. I, I find the Joy Cons to not as not be as. I, I have it on Switch. You got on a PC. But my biggest complaint is the controls and the Joy-Cons not doing what the Wii remotes did. Mm. Other things is like the levels are made for like very quick pointer controls. Like it's not a strategy game. It's like a real time strategy game where things are waving and balancing and you're pushing balloons in the air and they're going to pop. It's like I need extremely good controls. Yeah, agreed. And so it's like really frustrating when you're constantly resyncing that Joy-Con. Like it, it really, like it, I mean, I, I I find it very frustrating. Also, I think we both noted the uh, impossible challenges. Like to get a hundred percent, it seems insane. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it honestly almost feels like a DLC pack for World of Goo One. Uh, that, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. What do you, what do you, and I'm gonna say I I felt so burned by this game. It made me kind of want us to get Plucky Squire. Just due to disappointment in indie games. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't get Plucky Square either. But I feel very similar in some ways to you um, with regards to World of Goo Two. I didn't get the same issues with the switching controls. Like the mouse worked fine. I had no issues with that. But um, I realized that you know the first few levels, I was like, okay, of course it's gonna be similar to the original game. They're kind of teaching you stuff. But after I got to like you know the second world, kind of starting the third world, I'm like, man, I feel like. This really wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It really is just the same kind of world of goo, uh, goo balls and kind of puzzles. I thought it was going to be like, almost like, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. I want to say like uh, Galaxy 1 to 2, but even more outrageous. Like I thought it was going to be like really like crazy ideas. Um, 
where they just throw it to the wall and say, like, let's we just thought of all these awesome ideas that we wanted to put in. So it would feel like a expansion to World of Goo, but like crazy. And As opposed worth, to just it's, it's worth mentioning that Galaxy Two came out three years after less than three years after Galaxy One. This is sixteen years later. Yeah, that World of like, Goo's come like, out. I, I just thought there was gonna be like, oh my god, like these laser ones warp to these and do some crazy mechanic, and I'm like, oh, this is so wild. Like, how do they think of that? Like, I really thought it was gonna push the envelope of you know World of Goo construction, but it really is. It really just feels like a, a love letter to World of Goo One, and yeah, it's fun if you like them. And like, I thought it was okay. Um, my biggest issue is, um, spoilers for those that want to play it, I guess, is there's a, there's like a chain of levels in I think world four that was so bad and so like off genre of the game, like, like completely tone difference. Like everything is like tonal whiplash, like totally different. Oh yeah. it's, It's so bad and it ruins the pacing so bad that I, you can skip levels. I skip that in all six of them. And never, never play them ever. Like they're so bad, and wow. uh, I'm sure other people will say that's their favorite. But like, I, anyways, I liked the game. I didn't love it. I felt a little burned by it too. Um, like I, I don't hate finish. it. I don't. I don't. No, hate I, I don't. I didn't hate it either. I just think I was like, oh my god, 16 years or or so long for World of Goo two. I own World of Goo one on the Switch. Decided to get this one on the on the computer, and again, it just didn't really live up to what I thought it could be. Like, in my you, head... You, did, I, you played it on the, the original on Switch, not the Wii? I, play, I played it on the Wii, and then I got it again for the Switch. Oh, wow. You loved it. I mean, I, I think I just never beat it on the Wii and decided to get it again for the Switch. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, again, I really liked it, but in my like even in my head right now, I can think of more creative ideas than they put in this game. Cool. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, to me, it's uh, six out of ten, but like uh, on the on the gooder side of six. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, do you want me to do some more of my games, Derek, or do you want? I, to I can do either one if I I can say one. Or Let not. me do another quick one here. So okay. I've been I've been uh, playing a lot of Minecraft with my girlfriend's son. Oh, that's cool. He's only five. It's like he's obsessed with it, um, and he's good at it. Uh, I had never played Minecraft before, really. I did a, messed around in the alpha version back in, like, 2004. And I was like, oh, cool, whatever. But I gotta say, it's pretty impressive, and it feels like a giant Lego world. Mm-hmm. Uh, I bought it on Switch, and I have it on I have it on Xbox with Game Pass, so I'm able to play with two screens with two people at the same time at my place. Um, so it's, it's fun. We just play the crate mode. We don't do the survival mode, and it's just fun to, like, build houses and add animals and, and like... It's the crate mode. You can just fly around, and you have infinite of everything. So you're literally just building. It's yeah, like you're just building a world. Yeah, it's like really fun, and like it keeps building and building and building. Like you can literally add as much as you possibly want to this world. Like it, eventually, if you put too much on the screen, like the Switch version will start to lag really, really badly. Like if I drop like a hundred <laughs> animals, like it, it gets so laggy on the Switch. But if the if the person on the switches goes to like a different area, it loads out, and it's like it's just really well designed, and um, mm-hmm. I I understand why kids love it. So I don't know. It's that's been fu- a lot of fun in a different way. Nice. Do you play my? Have you ever played Minecraft? I played it once for like two days. Um, I like built a house and like got some pigs, and then I got killed, and I like wasn't really into it. I think I just wasn't. I think it's more fun playing online, and I just I joined too late. It wasn't for me. I mean, if you play with a little kid, it's it's fun. Yeah, I could see that too, for sure. Um, I'll talk about one game now. So, you know, this summer I played a few games. Um, been trying to play some Game Pass games. So I, and then this game kind of caught my my eye a while ago. It's called Humanity. And it's on PS PlayStation, right? It was a big PlayStation release originally. I got it on Game Pass. So yeah, it's, yeah. So um, basically, the the premise is it's a puzzle game, but you're a dog, and you can like give commands to the like this this um line of people walking you're like basically like hurting people um it's really cool because it starts off where you're just like oh you're just turning them and they have to kind of follow like a maze like a 3d maze structure to get to the end but eventually you have like jump long jump float uh push fight shoot um wait like there's all these kind of cool things and then the way it works is like at sometimes you have to do all the command setup before you 
let your people start walking. And once they start walking, you can't give them any more commands. So you're like in your head mapping out how all these paths you know, intertwine, and then, oh, if I push this block, then the, the upper path can walk up, walk across, but they fall down here, like, it gets really cool and intricate, and, you know, I, I'm a sucker for kind of cool puzzle games like this, um, so I, I'm really enjoying it, I'm, I'm near the end, I think I'm like 70% done, I haven't played it in a good month, but definitely want to go back and finish that game, so as far as puzzle games, if you like puzzle games, I would recommend this one for sure. Do you think I'd like it, because I, I, I remember seeing the trailer for it and thinking it looked really cool. It's really cool. I would say like the first five or six levels start off really easy. Even the first like two worlds, it gets quite hard. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, like in a good way. I think I think you would like it. It's free. I might as well try it. Yeah, exactly. Um, another game that I've been playing that's a kind of a funny one. Uh, so my girlfriend's son is also obsessed with Godzilla. Like, okay, obsessed. Uh, which I've never <laughs> met anyone who loves Godzilla this much. Um, and there really aren't a lot of quality Godzilla games out there, but I remember one for GameCube that we rented back way back when called Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee. Mm -hmm. Do you remember rent playing this game, Derek? I definitely rented it. I'm going to Google it, but I, I think I do remember the name. So I ordered a complete in box on GameCube, so it was like $100 plus. Um, and it's like kind of like this... It's like Power Stone. Like It's like you fight the monsters, but it's like looking down on them a bit over a city. And you could have up to four players fighting. And it's just kind of cool. Like, you destroy the city as you're playing. You pick up buildings. There's there's all these kind of um, power-ups. Like, you know, Mothra can come and, like, take you on. And there's, like... It's cool. Like, there's a lot of these uh, kaiju giant Godzilla monsters fighting with different <laughs> powers. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I use the cheat code so I can lock all the levels and all the monsters so we don't have to bother. Um it's, like, kind of clunky, you know what I mean? It's not, like, an amazing game, but, like, I don't know. It's been really fun, and he's pretty obsessed with it, so uh, it was funny. She was like, oh, thanks for getting him this game. I'm like, oh, I didn't get him this game. I'm like, I'm taking it home. Like, this is a collector's item. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, that was that's fun. Um, yeah, I guess we're just going back and forth. So I spent a good chunk of the summer... Um, so I got the PS Portal, so I was playing through a few um, PlayStation games. So I got a lot further in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Again, still feeling the, the same as I've talked about before, where it's a, such a good game in some ways, where it's like the action's great, it looks great, but the fetch quest, it's like just long in the tooth. It just gets kind of, it's overly bloated. Um, so I, I still haven't finished it. I put like a good 15, 20 hours in again, and still was like, I need a break from this. Um so that's one of those kind of games where, uh, I, I don't know, I, it's fun, but... Uh, you can't just like, gut pass all the... Ten, like, rush the you, game you, finish? You can, but I just, like... For me, it's like, well, then I'm not getting the levels, and I'm not really taking in it all. Like, I think I will eventually do that when I pick it up again. Um, the other game, so just similar, um, that I picked up to play on the portal is Armor Chord 6. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, so I don't know how far you got. I'm probably, like... I think I'm on halfway through maybe i'm about halfway yeah i don't know if you did you fight the giant ice worm no okay so i'm a bit further than you anyway so I'm, i got to the giant ice worm thing and i um haven't been able to beat him and he's super hard and then i another game came out so i kind of jumped to a different game i like it like it is a really fun game and i and i get why it's cool and i it's cool to build your own robot and then the controls feel great do i like it as much as other from games i know it's totally not in the same genre no. Like, I don't really like these short five-minute missions. It doesn't really... They're so it. short, huh? I would have preferred, like, a big open world or, like, ten Yeah, like, it just it doesn't, yeah. doesn't quite do it for me. I like the customization, but, um, again, I'm not a big person on customizing to, you know, and trying a bunch of different options for parts. Like, that's just not my style either. So, overall, am I enjoying it? Yeah. Will I finish it? Yeah. Do I think it's, like, the the best game in, in, in my... I, let's put it this way I enjoy it but I'm happy I got it at $30 I mean it's one of the best mech games you got out there right like yeah but I'm better... not a me I'm also not a mech game player I mean so. my, my problem and the reason I fell off was simply because it's so hard and there's sometimes I'm just like when I beat a boss I'd be like I don't think I feel like I earned that I'm just like mashing things mm -hmm. so I just I don't know if I'm like connecting with it I'm also always like did I choose the right parts do I need to do some of the side missions to upgrade first? Like, it just kind of felt a little bit, um, I don't know. I just, it's the kind of game that I wish I could just 
not f- be frustrated with, right? Like, mm-hmm. give me an, give me an easy mode, frankly. Yeah. Uh, so another game I got the other day. Um, my friend was like, "Hey, we need to play games together." So I'm like, "Okay." And that Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection came out. Oh yeah, uh, I've been eyeing that one too. So I bought it, and then he bought it, and then I found it. He bought it for PS5. I bought it for Switch. So we can't play together. Why would you nope. buy it for Switch? Why would you buy it for PS5? It's an old game. It runs absolutely yeah, would, yeah, you're right. It would run. It runs perfect. perfectly on Switch, and it's a great game because I just brought it up to my Owen Sound. I was, you know, I played at my friend's place. It's the kind of game like I want portably for like quick bursts, play on a plane. Like it's not a game I need to be glued to my TV to play. Mm-hmm. Like I very, I very much see Switch as my place for um, older games, and PS5 is like more like my premium games. Yeah. Um, I will say, like, it has a lot of co- a big collection of games. A lot of them feel the same. Like, Wolverine as a fighter is feels exactly the same in all the games. It's like it's like almost like they just evolved it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But the real reason is because Marvel vs. Capcom Two is such an awesome game. Uh, it plays really well on Switch. Has lots of features, and I'm just really impressed by the pixel graphics animation. Like, I'm like, wow! Like, this is a 25 year old game. And it looks great. And it's tons of characters. It's fun. Like, I mean, the only thing is, Derek, like, I paid like $67 for it, Canadian. What? Do you, I know, it's expensive. Um, so these are also the kind of games that go on sale a lot. So just just wait. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's not cheap. That's my biggest complaint. Yeah, I, I definitely want that game eventually just because I, like, I have Ultimate... Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 on the PS4 and I really like that game. Um, this is better. Yeah, so, yeah I'm excited. to. I remember playing that game in some arcades. Um, yeah, super excited for that. So uh, I have two, like the two big games I have I can still talk about but I'm just going to briefly kind of touch on a few games that I have also played in the summer. Uh, okay. So I played a bit more Diablo 4. Still enjoying it at times. It's nice to take breaks. They definitely improved it a lot. The expansion comes out next month, which I'm excited for. I think I'll grab that day one and, and you know, kind of jump in. Um, Kanitsugami I tried on Game Pass. I think I talked about it a bit with you before. It's one of those games where I, I think you would really like to play. Um, it's it's a strategy kind of game, but it just is kind of a cool Xbox 360 GameCube kind of vibe where it's simple, but there's kind of a fun element to it. Very arcadey. And then I also played a bunch of Astral Ascent, which is like a, it's like an indie game. It's very reminiscent of um, Dead Cells, like very kind of the same roguelike 2D kind of even graphic. Mm -hmm. Um, Super duper fun. It's almost like Hades meta progression with all like the different weapons and different characters and and all these upgrades, but plays more like um, Dead Cells. So I got super into that, got like, you know, beat the game like 50 times kind of thing. Um and those are kind of the games I just briefly wanted to talk about, but I've Did you ever still. beat that did you ever beat that strategy game you're playing from uh you know the the Japanese one? Kunitsugami? No, the other one that you're playing when I was at your place, remember? You like you like choose I, I you were showing me when I was at your place. Uh you mean, Unicorn can't... Overload? Lord? Yeah, yeah. Did you beat that? Oh yeah, I beat that a while a long time ago. Okay, I was just curious. Okay. Well, I, I love have... that game. That that might be that's probably might be my top three game of the year, to be honest. Wow. Um, so I have yeah. one big game. I think you know what it is, Astrobot. So, but I'll touch on two other yeah. games I played quickly. Okay. Uh, I played a little bit of The Last of Us Two remastered. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just played the opening like I don't know, twenty five minutes, and it crashed, and I played it again. Uh, <laughs> I won't even get into my PS Five crashing. I took it apart. I cleaned it. I factory reset it. Seems to be working now. Good. But I literally took it apart and took out all the dust and factory reset it, reinstalled everything, and I think it's okay. But anyways. Um, it looks incredible. Honestly, I gotta say, Last of Us Two still still looks incredible. Like I'm blown away by the le- the attention to detail. And like now that it has the the gyro, because I think the gyro wasn't there at the launch. It like was patched in later. It feels so good to play. It looks so amazing. You can see some of like the. Sh- I guess I don't know if it's just like the way Naughty Dog makes their games, but you can kind of feel the um, streamlining of it. You're like, okay, I get that you're just guiding me through this path. And you're giving me the illusion that I can go anywhere, but really, like, you're really strategically guiding me, you know? Mm-hmm. And I get, like, this big vista is just, like, a loaded-in screen, and then I'm going to go around and load in the closer version. Like, you kind of start to see those those bits, but it's still, like, an incredible game with incredible voice acting and, and details. And I'm, like, I'm going to... I'm really looking forward to beating it this winter. 
Um, Are you going to try to other... beat it before season two of the show? Yes, for sure. I think that comes out, what, yeah. early next year? I think early next year. My goal is to beat one and two again for that. Yeah. Mm. Um, I also played a bit of Neon White uh, for about a few hours. Maybe nice. Hour. Okay. I've, I, yeah, I remember recommending this to you. Uh, I really like it. I can see where it's very addictive. It kind of feels like um, the evolution of Mirror's Edge. Like, uh, yeah. you know, like platforming first person. And I, it's really very fun. Fluid. Yeah. yeah um, and, like, I think this is the kind of game I'd want on Switch because... It seems like a perfect handheld game, and apparently it runs perfectly on Switch, like 60 frames. Hmm. It's just $25, where it's free on Xbox. Um, but yeah, I'm, I really like it. It's like kind of a good pick-up-and-play game for a little bit, and it's like, once you yeah. kind of get the controls, it's like this kind of puzzle, platforming action game. It's really cool. I will say, I find the story like cringy, and I skip every single part of it like as fast oh, as I can. Oh, me too. 100%. Yeah. And I just don't I just don't think arcade games like this justify a story and I just don't need to know why well, this is happening like just treat it like a game you yeah. know um but yeah, it, yeah that's fun um but yeah Good, my I'm, last game I'm, I'm glad you like that yeah. my last game here is Astrobot Derek I don't know if you want to talk about that now we got Astrobot Astro and then I'll talk about my last game after let's talk about okay. Astrobot so Astrobot I'm only on level 2 like world 2 world 2 um okay. As I mentioned, my PS5 was crashing. Uh, I don't know why, um, but it crashed to the point where I had to repeat the first few levels over and over and over again. Uh, and like I've I've lost hours of progress. And finally, I'm I'm at the point where I'm like I'm go. The game doesn't save properly. I don't know it updated, so maybe it does now. But if the game crashes, you lose everything that uh, that you have done at that point, unless you've quit the game. Yeah, you have to close and the game to save. Yeah, that's crazy to me. By the way, like it's that you can power your PS5 off in the middle of the game and nothing saved. So I'm ca- every time I beat a level, I go back to the main menu to like mm. force the save. It's really quite annoying to the title screen. I think that's like a glitch. Like, like that's like a flaw in the game. What did you do and for like after like three levels? Why because ever- it was crashing every level and a half. Oh. Right. It was I, I one time I when I turned it off for a long time, I got three levels and then it crashed. So I'm like. Luckily, it hasn't crashed again since I took my PS5 apart and polished it and refactory reset it. But, like, just very frustrating. <laughs> um, and it made kind of a grading to play through those first few levels. Uh, I was really, really frustrated. And it actually kind of deterred me from playing for a while. Um, but I, they must have improved that now. I mean, some people online are, are saying that, that that's fixed now. Hmm. You know? Okay. Anyways, I think it's a really great game. I think it's Mario Galaxy. It's the true... It's like the spiritual Mario Galaxy 3. Um, it's just like invites you to play with everything you walk by. Everything moves. Everything animates. It's like tons of interesting new mechanics. One of them reminds me of the cloud mechanic from Mario Galaxy 2 where you like get the three uh, oh, yeah, flower three pads. Platforms, yeah. There was one where you shrink down into like drink that, size. Okay, yeah. That blew my mind. It's like, this is so creative and so cool. And the graphic fidelity being so impressive when you're small and big. Uh, it's the best use of the DualSense Rumble and Gyro I've seen. Uh, this is definitely potentially game of the year. I, I'm excited for like the later levels to be more challenging. Because uh, mm-hmm. right now it's more playing. It's easy. Like some of the, it's easy, but it's like fun. But I know it's going to get harder. Um, and the other thing, I saw an article mm-hmm. the other day or today that talked about how the fan service in the game is like doing the game a dessert. Like it's not good for the identity of the series. Mm-hmm. Did you hear about this Kotaku yeah, article? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I completely disagree. Uh, I, I don't love the fan service. Like it's neat. Uh, it's like after a while you're kind of like okay, but I think the game still has enough of its own unique identity and unique characters and unique style that it, it's not like it takes away from the game being its own thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm not like super over the moon about like, oh my God, I'm seeing these, you know, uh, Leon from Resident Evil 2 and like, it is kind of a nice throwback to all these different series, but, um, I don't think it's, I don't agree that it's deterring from the game and the game has no soul, but I'd be interested in your no, take I th- on yeah, that. Yeah, I think that was, that was silly too. Yeah, like, so different experience, probably same, same, similar take, but I've, um, didn't have any crashes. I've now 101% beat the game. Oh, wow. Don't spoil anything. I, I, I won't. <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> so um, at first, I was very much like, this game is very simple. You know, the, there's not a lot to do with Astro 
like the controls are there, but it's like you really can just jump, hum, hover. Simple and, move set. You're right. Yeah, where it's like you know, I think about when we compare it to Galaxy or Odyssey, it's like part of the fun is moving Mario. Where this is, the fun is more of the world and just kind of being in it. Uh, I don't really know how to explain it. Like I, I think it looks amazing, and I like the creative ideas of the levels. Um, but it wasn't like, oh, I'm really having fun controlling Astro. Now, you mentioned the level that was kind of my turning point of going from this game's a really good game to this game's a really great game. Is that shrinking down as a mouse level? Like, that was just, to me, I was like, I had a smile on my face playing that level. That was just really, really cool. Um, so that was kind of that moment of, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm really enjoying this game now. The rest of the game, I, I really, really loved. I'm not going to talk about it in too much detail. I don't think it was... Um, it did, never really reached that difficulty of being kind of entertainingly difficult and also never reached kind of that creative level of, um, I want to say almost like it takes two where there's just constantly new ideas. Eventually it kind of was like, Oh, we're just recycling similar mm. world ideas and similar, um, power ups. Um, some but of the difficult Mario 3d Mario does that too. Of course. I'm not, I'm not trying to slight it against that. Um, I found some of the challenge levels difficult-ish, but there wasn't really many of them, or they were kind of short. And that kind of brings my my one big criticism of the game is, and this is true of a lot of Mario games too, but I I don't know why it just felt worse here. Maybe it's because of the Astro controls. Is The levels are very... um, You feel like you're on a very straight path where there's not a lot of room to maneuver. Like I don't know how to explain it. It's very tracky. Does that make sense? Somewhat, but I mean, isn't that just a style of 3D platformer? Like, it's like Galaxy, right? Totally. Where... I guess I guess for me it's more like, oh, I'm in this really cool jungle world, but I'm like, oh, I don't really get to do much in the jungle except for, like, hop on this platform to these two ropes to another platform to walk a little bit, to punch this thing, to go on a rope again. I, I know that sounds like a silly criticism. To, to but me, it, it... that's just, like, the deliberate style of it. Like, what did you expect? It's not open. It's not sandbox. No, was... yeah, t- totally. I just think with that, like like I was saying, the controls don't do much for me. So the only thing that I was kind of enjoying was the world, in a sense. Um, and it just felt a little bit narrow or con- claustrophobic. I know I'm being critical right now, and I, I, I want to just reiterate, like, I loved this game. Like, I really, really liked it. It will make my game of the year list. I don't think it'll be game of the year for me. I think it'll be in the top five or six. Wow. Um, <laughs> It's still a really good game. I, I just, uh, I just, you know, it's a really, really, really good game. I just don't think it blew me away like some others did. I enjoyed it a lot. Really creative. I think really what I was missing is difficulty and movement. Interesting. And so, how would you compare it to uh, Mario Galaxy One and Two? Um, some people, some people are saying online, they're like, "This is better than Mario Odyssey," and I'm like, "Really?" Like, I think it's better in than Mario Odyssey in some ways where Mario Odyssey because it's a little bit more open um, does feel a little bit void of things at times Um, and I'm not a big fan of you know Mario Odyssey's handing out moons like candy but it is Mm -hmm. just more fun to like like I could pick up Mario Odyssey now and have fun doing a world I've I've already done collected everything I already did just because it's fun to like jump off the wall and throw your cap and do this crazy thing like that is just fun and you only ever beat Odyssey once right uh I think just once, but I 100%ed it. Like I got. But I'm telling you, the true when I really learned to appreciate Odyssey was when I beat it without trying to. I just got as many moves as I needed for the next level, and that run through the game made me realize how amazing it is. It's only when you have to feel like you scrape everything where it feels like tiresome. Yeah. Uh, so if you can lose your sense of getting everything, it's really a lot better. But anyways, that's okay. a digression. Yeah, I. Um, so. Astrobot is not fun in that same sense. Like, I think if I... I don't know if I'd ever play Astrobot again. Hmm. You know, it, it's a really fun game. It's, a, it's fun to play through. But it's one of the things where like, well, I've already experienced every level. I just... It feels a little bit chory now. Where if I played Mario Odyssey, I'd be like, well, even though I've done everything, it's just fun to go through it. Like, I really think movement is a big thing. Um, if you don't have fun movement and, like, just, like, moment-to-moment gameplay... Um, then it has to be somewhat difficult. Like I, Astrobot, find, I, I yeah. find the movement fun. I just don't. I guess you're right. And like it's not where Mario feels like there's a lot of personality. Where it's like almost 
you feel like you're him and you feel like yeah. you can like find new ways to do things. It's just tight controls. Uh, like it's Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, I, that, I, I still you, love. I think the it's game. the best looking game, one of the best looking games I've seen in, in terms of like, there's just no jaggies or flaws or frame rate slowdowns. Like it's. Yeah, it's, it looks great. Um, what would you give it out of ten? Like an eight? Oh no, I'd I'd give it like a low nine, like a nine point okay. two. Like it's still up okay. there. Like I really liked it. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I look I, forward to playing it now. I mean, now you made me not like it anymore. So thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, like you, you'll still love it, and you know I recommend you doing the very final like. Yeah, the, even the very final level I have issues with. But you know what? I um, just there's 3D platformers like this are so rare to get this level of polish and like the great agreed. music and great. So I'm just like I am very to me it's right now by far my game of the year. Yeah, mine de- definitely not my game of the year, but it's you know it's top five right now. So what's the other game you've been playing, Derek? Yeah, so the other game I played a, a lot, like 60 hours. I just checked my time yesterday. I got the platinum yesterday as well. Is Wukong or Black Myth Wukong? So I was not gonna get this game because it I you know as I'm a very big uh, fan of physically collecting games and this game does not have a physical um, release right now and they don't really know if there is gonna be one officially coming. I had two friends uh, get this game back to back like the, one day after another and one of them is a huge Souls fan and the other one's not but he just got into the hype and I was like well the three of us have a little group chat where we talk about the games we're playing. And I was like, I could already see them just going to be talking about this game, and I'm going to be the one missing out. So I was like, screw it. I don't haven't bought a, a full price game in a while. I'm going to buy it and give it a go. Um, got super into it. I beat the game twice. They're still like halfway twice. through the first run. Yeah, so I beat the whole game, and then I beat the whole game on New Game Plus, and then I collected everything to get a 100% platinum. So you love this game. I really like this game could be my game of the year. I think there's a couple that I have to kind of deliberate over, but this game could be my game of the year for sure. Uh, who made who made this game? It's like a Chinese developer, right? It's a Chinese developer. I don't even know the name of the develop, developer. Um, okay. And I, you know, there are flaws with this game. Like I, I there are things that I am not a fan of. Um, but if I really think about it, most of the game I really, really, really enjoy, and it's one of those games where. I'm trying to think of another good example that you would feel the is, same. Is it open world? It's one big world, right? Uh, no, it's so there's like six kind of chapters, and each chapter is its own like biome. Like like one's uh, a desert, and one's a mountain with like with snow, and one's a volcano. Um, it's very much like a Dark Souls, where it's like not an Elden Ring. It's like a Dark Souls, where like sometimes there's a little bit of a branching path, but usually there's one kind of main path that, or they branch back together, and then there's like a boss that's blocking the next okay. path. Cool. Um, yeah, it's it's very much like a Dark Souls game, um, but it's also like God of War with skill trees and just fun moveset and armor. Like I just, it kind of hits all the right notes for me. Um, but it's one of those games, as I was saying, that you can see where it went wrong or like has little issues that would make a sequel that good. If it just fixed those few little things that people had gripes with, it could be interesting. And those are, I I might not even know those things. Those are probably like from game meta, meta things, right? Not even like it's, it's more like, Oh, the load time is a little longer than I want. Like, Oh, I have to run back more than I thought. Or it takes a while to pick these things up or, you know, the move set feels a little bit like there's not enough variation, um, in like the the actual normal attacks, so which I what guess would, is true. Of, what genre would you call it? Like a, a Souls like? I would say it's it's a mix of like Sekiro and Dark Souls and God of War, like Ragnarok. Okay, so it's a little more ma- like. Is there an easy mode? Like, can I play this game or no? No, it's just one difficulty. But I would say the game is easier than all Souls games. Okay. Um, yeah, like and like you get powers that are just like make it really really easy. So it's more like God of War, where it's like, you know, there's difficulty to it, but you kind of get overpowered to the point where you can kind of just crush things. Uh, I like that. Yeah, like, I, I really, really like the game. And again, for, you know, taking a chance on kind of a new developer and um, a new IP, like, I really liked it. And I, I would hmm. I would rate it higher than um, Liza P. Significant. Wow. Yeah, and I really like Liza P. Um, okay, well, let's... Uh... I mean, we don't have a ton of time left, so I wanted to touch on a big thing happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's my birthday. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> next week, or actually yeah. this week, a brand new Zelda comes out. 
Mm-hmm. Thursday. And there hasn't been a brand new Zelda in one year. <laughs> but truthfully, <laughs> there hasn't been a brand new top-down Zelda in 11 years since uh, Link Between Worlds. I guess, Which, yeah, we're talking about new ones, it, yeah. Yeah, new ones, because I don't consider a remake, no. But Link Between Worlds to me is, uh, I think, one of my favorite games ever. Like, I love it. Hmm. It's It was amazing. Um, so I, I found myself getting more and more hyped for this, Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. I'm going to take Thursday off to play it. <laughs> okay. I already have it off, so it worked out. <laughs> Um, I don't know why it's coming out on a Thursday and not a Friday. That seems weird to me because that's not typical for Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm already prepared for the frame rate dips. So I'm, yeah, I you mentally, saw that. There's some yep, performance issues. Yeah. I, I read the previews. I'm mentally prepared. I wish there was a 30 frame mode, but I think it'll still be better than, from what I read, it's still going to be better than um, Link's Awakening because Link's Anything Awakening it, it, crashed in that one spot. Yeah, like this one had some issues. I'm sure this will too, but you know, I also am a little bit like people that have issues with 60 frames per second dropping. Like for me, 60 dropping to 45, back to 60, isn't a huge thing for me. You know, like I, I agree, just, I yeah. agree, I, but it's only that in a uh, Link's Awakening remake that it actually dropped to like 20 in that swamp yeah. area. Yeah, and I also found when you went into the homes and out of the homes, the load time was too long. So I'm hoping it has little polished things like that, that that don't annoy me. But from what I... So I went on kind of a blackout of the previews because I didn't want to keep watching stuff. Um, but from the little bit of the previews that I saw, it's glowing. And it sounds like I sort of predicted months ago that you said I was wrong, that it's so incredibly open that you can fly, like you can jump off a cliff and fly places. You can jump on trees. I think you'll be able to do dungeons out of order. Like I really, oh, yeah, keep, like people are yeah. saying it's like this is a big, big jump. Um, so the, I, yeah. I, I, I know there's a spoilers out, so I just, I just want to see how many dungeons there were. I'm not going to tell you, but um, there's one person that said speed running this game is going to be insane because there's literally people that are going into one of the dungeons and using one of the like one of the echoes and like skipping the whole dungeon straight to the boss. Wait, like, there's, is, there's like, is the game already leaked? Oh yeah, there's spoilers all over. Because I don't, you know, I don't go to reset era anymore. So I, I actually am glad. I'm, I like because I spoiled a lot of Tears of the Kingdom, right? So I, I'm, I'm staying out of that. Um, yeah. That sounds that sounds awesome to me. Yeah, it's like, like what, you can, yeah, you can get really creative. Yeah. When are the reviews going to come out? Maybe tomorrow, huh? Uh, I didn't look that up. I can look it up, but um, um, yeah. Anyways, I'm I'm super excited for it. I'm not taking a day off work, but uh, why? Fra- why not? Because I just have I, I have to do. <laughs> but um, Friday after work, I my wife works till eleven that night, so I'm hoping to just kind of like get some good hours in that evening. Nice. Now, Derek, are you looking up when the reviews come out? I'm about to. Yeah. I was gonna say, what do you predict the review score? I think it'll be above ninety. Oh, um, me, me too. I think it'll be ninety one, ninety two, ninety seven. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ninety six, ninety seven. Um, well, it doesn't matter. By the time most people listen to this, the reviews will be out. It's it's either tomorrow or the day after. Like they're not going to be the day of, right? Because we're four I'm, days away here. I'm looking for it. I can't find it. it. It's probably it's probably the day before. It's probably Wednesday. Yeah, it's, it's probably Wednesday. But um, you know, I think for yeah, our, I, I found it Wednesday. Yeah, for our listeners, like our major fans out there, all seven, if not three. Uh, yeah, we lost a few over the summer. We probably lost a few over the summer. Uh, if you're still there, just know that I think that we shouldn't go another four months. We should probably, in a month, talk about this. Oh, right? yeah. We can even sooner if you want. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm planning to not waste my time on this, right? I'm going to beat it, like, fast. So I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to spend, like, a year playing it like Tears of the Kingdom. I think it'll mm-hmm. be something I can beat by the end of October. You know, also there'll be some other games to play, maybe some Switch Two news. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm pumped up to ten here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Uh, well, Derek, is there any other topics for tonight? I mean, we've gone for an hour and fifteen now. Uh, that's really it in my mind. I know like there's the PlayStation State of Play tomorrow, but you know that's not totally our realm, anyways. 
I mean, if it's really exciting, maybe we can talk about it. I, I, I just found out about that today and forgot. So, yeah, I think it was only told today. I wonder. They say it's an update on games, so no brand new games, right? Did I see that right? I didn't see that. People okay. are predicting Resident Evil Nine will be shown. I hope so. I hope they also give a release date for Metal Gear Solid Three uh, Remake. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, maybe we can talk about it. Uh, we'll, can we'll, can we'll... I? S- okay, sorry. I, I had a question to wrap up, but sure. So just just what's your besides for Zelda? What's your next game that you're most anticipating? Okay, and like want to play. And uh, the other side car- question of that is, what's your thought on Silent Hill Two? Maybe those are the same answer, but that's the same answer. <laughs> okay, because the previews for Silent Hill Two were pretty good pretty great mm-hmm. actually that i saw like and i watched some gameplay it looks great and yeah the previews are good like it's there's there's not really any reason to think it's going to be bad like so you think blue, you're gonna blooper be damned so you think you're gonna pick it up day one i have to see like if i'm working a lot around that time i maybe not but i definitely plan to what, get it this year unless it gets like terrible reviews what's it got a review for you to, to get it uh, it needs to get like maybe around the eight. Like if it's like seventy eight or higher Metacritic, that's kind of the world where I'm like, okay, like I want to get this. If it's eighty five or higher, I'm gonna be like more day one. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm pretty, but it, I'm pretty similar. I think it looks great, and the thing that I kind of like about it is like, you know, just like classic Silent Hill one and two, the the combat's a bit janky, mm-hmm. and. One of the pre, some of the previews in the gameplay that I've seen is showing that the the combat's still a little janky. It's not like Resident Evil Two Remake or Four Remake where it's like very smooth. Mm-hmm. But that kind of plays into it, right? It, it it feels less. It's not leaning into the modernized action game version. It really is like you only have a couple bullets, and you might you're gonna have to run away from a lot of enemies. And it, and it, it is mo- they say it's modernized enough because it was really janky back on PS2. And it just looks like it's hitting that perfect mark where I actually think it's like, it has a little bit of that jank that makes it still scary. Mm-hmm. Where I can't say that Resident Evil 2, 8, or 4 were, were really that scary. 7 was. But do you know what I mean? Like, they just kind yeah. of felt a little too OP when you got good at them. Mm-hmm. 7 was quite scary for the first half, I thought. But I think this game will retain some of that, like, janky unsure of yourself fear so i'm I'm. this is the only other game i'm actually playing to buy this year obviously there's game pass games for free but um yeah. pretty Indiana much Jones. yeah in december uh and yeah. stalker 2 which keeps getting delayed so that's in november and then call yeah. of duty blacks up six in november mm-hmm. uh what about you are you gonna get silent hill 2 again if it reviews really well i'm more likely to get it uh day one or eventually um, as far as, you know, I'm looking forward to, like, Factorio is getting a big update in October, Diablo 4 expansions in October, um, Indian what about Soccer me- 2. Like, like, what's that game? Metaphor or whatever it's called. Metaf- re- Metaphor Re Fantasio. Yeah. I, like, I didn't like Persona. Like, I just, I have no, even though this game looks really cool and different enough, I just, I don't trust it because I thought Persona 5 was going to be cool and it just totally was not my thing. Mm. Um I would maybe bar I would borrow this off a friend to see if I liked it, but I don't think a single friend of mine is going to get this game. But also in uh, what is it? it November seventh is uh, Empire of the Ants. <laughs> yeah, the guy. <game. laughs> that game good to review well. I don't know. Um, the one game I actually did want to mention that's coming in October, which I am pretty excited for, is Neva. It's made what? by the same. I know it's an indie game. We, I briefly have mentioned it before. It's made by the same guys that made Gri, like G R I S. Oh, cool! Yeah, and like it's about like I think a fox and a boy. And it just it looks like that same kind of beautiful story and art style. So I really love Gri as well. So I, I think I'm gonna grab that too. as just kind of the, one of those switch um, indie games to kind of close out the year. Cool. Yep. Yeah. So it's kind of fine. Sweet. Well, Derek, I think that we're just about out of time. Definitely. Uh, This is the Nintendo Bros. Pete signing out. And this is Derek. See you later.